I was taught to do carpentry by my great uncle James. I'll never forget that one day he came by to check on what I was doing and he saw that there was a couple of bent nails. I just pounded them flat and moved on. He pointed it out and he said, pull them. This time, do the job right. My response was, it's going to be covered with drywall. No one will ever see it, so who cares? He looked me right in the eye and he said, you should care. The difference between a good carpenter and a great carpenter is attention to detail. If we as the builders don't care about what we're doing, why should the people who live here care about what we've done? My great uncle James taught me a valuable lesson that day. Your attitude towards what you're doing will directly affect the quality of the final product. There's a reason why so many religions and philosophies around the world have the teaching, by your works, you shall be known. Because everything you do reveals what's in here and what's in here. We have us a new trailer for season two of Rings of Power. And everybody involved in this show can't wait are dying to tell us how much they absolutely hate and despise everything to do with Tolkien and how much they absolutely hate and despise people who appreciate and enjoy Tolkien. The first sign that all is not well with the Rings of Power is world building. (laughs) What world building? They can't even be bothered to try to do any world building. They hate Tolkien. They hate every idea found in the Lord of the Rings. They refuse to promote those ideas. In their mind, glorify those ideas. Their goal is to destroy Tolkien, destroy his work, replace it with their own work, with their own ideology. So what you do is you're vague. You sprinkle in enough references that allows the audience to impose their own interpretation, their own understanding of Tolkien's world building upon your new story. Insidious. The Lord of the Rings is about a ring. You like rings. Look, look, we got three rings. Three rings are better than one, right? The Lord of the Rings has Sauron. You like Sauron, right? Look, look, we have Sauron's crown. Come on, it's the crown. The Lord of the Rings had Gandalf riding Shadowfax across a beautiful landscape in a hurry to get to Gondor. Well, look at our show. We have people riding horses across a beautiful landscape in a hurry to do important things as well. You like the planteer, right? Well, we got the planteer. You like the Balrog? We got the Balrog. But our Balrog's going to be bigger and better. You like the Battle of Helm's Deep? We have a better Battle of Helm's Deep. Ants are cool, right? We love the Ents, particularly because they're convenient tools that allow us to slip all sorts of environmental messages into the show. We have Ents, but we're better than that. We have Ent Wives, and you're going to learn what happened to the Ent Wives. It's going to allow us to check two boxes, feminist message, environmental message. The Lord of the Rings has dark, spooky tunnels with big spiders. You like big spiders, right? Well, you guessed it. Our show is going to have dark, spooky tunnels with big spiders. And remember how Sam fought off Shelob with a dagger? Well, our character is going to fight off multiple big spiders with just a dagger. Remember Legolos? Everybody loves Legolos, right? Remember that great scene where Legolos stabs a baddie with an arrow? Well, in our show, Don Lemonloss is going to stab a baddie with an arrow, too. You'll like that, right? Remember the giant eagles? Everybody loves the eagles, right? Well, we got the eagles. Remember the ride of the Rohirrim? Of course you do. One of the great scenes in the movies. That inspirational speech by King Theoden. Death! And they go bravely charging across the Pelennor fields straight into those baddie orcs. Ah, so inspirational so moving. Guess what? Our show has the right of the Rohirrim as well. Never mind the fact we don't believe in loyalty, courage, self-sacrifice. Never mind the fact we're incapable of writing an inspirational speech because we don't believe in being inspired by anything. But we have the right of the Rohirrim. If you're going to mess around with symbolism, you got to know what you're doing. 
When you use symbolism, in this case imagery, that's meant to evoke the audience's memories of Tolkien's world building, but you remove the imagery from its context, the very thing that gave the image its symbolic meaning, the image becomes empty and hollow, meaningless. You're just using imagery for imagery's sake. J.R.R. Tolkien and the writers of the Rings of Power are speaking two very different languages that have nothing in common with each other. The Rings of Power doesn't take place in Tolkien's world. It's not even inspired by Tolkien's world. It's a completely separate thing. But the writers are trying to use our memories of Tolkien's world to give their world legitimacy. It's such a spectacular failure that the audience is rejecting it out of hand. By your works, you shall be known. The writer's contempt for all things Tolkien goes well beyond the writing. They can't even be bothered to do the props right. You like Sauron? Look, look, we got Sauron's crown. Sauron's goal is to have every living being in Middle-earth submit to his will. His crown is symbolic of Sauron's right to have every living being submit to his will. Sauron's crown represents his honor, his dignity, his divine right to rule. It should be made with the finest craftsmanship that can be found in all of Middle-earth. Look closely at the crown. It looks like it's been made of cast iron, low quality cast iron. The surface is irregular, full of dips and divots, like it was poured into a mold incorrectly. None of the edges or lines on the crown are sharp and distinct. And if you look at all the spikes, the smaller ones on the crown, they don't even look like they're consistent either. It's a half-assed, don't give a shit attempt at designing Sauron's crown. The elven rings are supposed to be three examples of the zenith of elven craftsmanship, the height of their art, the epitome of elven beauty. The rings are so beautiful, they're seductive. You want to put them on. You want to wield their power. These rings, do you think of words like sophisticated, elegant, seductively beautiful to the point that you as the audience would like to put one on? <laughs> Not a chance. The words that come to my mind? Cheap, gaudy, tacky. They look like a ring pop, candy you would buy from a vending machine. In my critique of season two's first trailer, I went into greater depth analyzing the environments and the architecture on display. All my criticisms for that trailer apply to this one as well. They showed the same environments, the same architecture in both trailers. One of the hardest things for filmmakers, video game designers struggle with this as well, is creating believable environments. The Elven Workshop is a tragic example of this problem. This is supposed to be the workshop of the greatest elven craftsman who ever lived. And he worked in this workshop for thousands of years. What about this workshop screams elf? What about this workshop screams age, use? Where are the tools, the accoutrements of crafting? Everything is too sharp, crisp, clean, new. Where are the scuffs, scrapes, wear patterns on the floor? Why aren't the steps rounded over on the edges? Here's the dead giveaway. The thing that tells us this is a set and not a real environment. Stuff. Stuff just piled everywhere. Random stuff piled all around for no apparent reason. Why are those boxes and barrels just scattered around the workshop? More specifically, why are they stacked up in between the area where they're lowering the anvil, where they're gonna be hammering the hot metal, and the forge, the fire in the back, where they're melting the metal. How are they gonna get back and forth between those two spaces with all that stuff just piled up randomly in between? Set designers, directors have this obsession. Stuff, we need visual interest. Stuff, stuff, stuff everywhere. Y'all know who gets it right? Enough stuff to make the space believable without overdoing it? Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom. But then again, the Japanese have an appreciation for empty space. By your works, you will be known. And it's pretty clear, to me at any rate, that the writers and everybody else involved with the Rings of Power want it to be crystal clear, and they hate Tolkien, and they hate us. Once upon a time, 15, 20 years ago, 
Hollywood had the talent to write such compelling stories that the audience was willing to overlook the hate aimed at them. Nowadays, Hollywood is ramping up the hate, but they no longer have the talent to tell compelling stories. The audience is seeing through the song and dance, and almost nobody accepts the idea that The Rings of Power has anything to do with Tolkien. The Rings of Power Season 2 is going to be a disaster of epic proportions, and I'm here to mock the ever-loving hell out of it every step along the way. Buckle up, folks. This is going to be a fun ride. At any rate, I hope I've given you all something to think about, and until next time, y'all be safe. If y'all are still here, I really appreciate it. While you're at it, why don't you like this video, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell. You can hear me yammer on about something else. And feel free to share this video far and wide. Please like and subscribe. Please leave a comment.